Who is your favorite queen? Hello, friends and history lovers, and a very happy new year. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. This has been a fantastic year. I hit 100,000 subscribers and found a new history focus for my channel. But if you're a fan of my spookier content, don't worry. I'll still throw in some thrills and chills from time to time, and especially in October. New videos come out every Tuesday at noon. In 2020, my resolution is to create profile videos of 20 intriguing European queens. 10 queens regnant, that's queens who ruled in their own right, and 10 queen consorts, those who were married to kings. Some of them will be empresses too. I don't want to leave out Catherine the Great or Maria Theresa. I have an idea of the fascinating females I would like us to get to know better this year, but I want to hear from you. Who would you like to learn more about and who are you less interested in? For Queen's Regnant, I like... Constance of Sicily was a nun until the age of 30. She then married Holy Roman Emperor Henry VI, but was the Queen of Sicily in her own right. At 40, she gave birth to her son in public so that no one would question that he was hers. Margrethe I of Denmark, who through circumstances became Queen of Denmark and Norway, and through cunning united all of Scandinavia under her wise and just rule. She did great things for her people and formed the mighty Kalmar Union that made the Nordic countries a real power in Europe for a century. Isabella I of Castile, who, with her husband Ferdinand, united much of Spain, launched Columbus's expedition to the New World, and started the Spanish Inquisition. She was the mother of four queens, two of whom are on my list. Queen Juana of Castile and Catherine of Aragon, Queen of England. Juana of Castile, Isabella's daughter, known as Juana the Mad, was haunted by mental health problems and supposedly lived with her beloved husband's corpse. Though many believe that her husband and father spread these horrible rumors about her to keep her under their control. Elizabeth I of England, daughter of Henry VIII, who was never expected to be queen. But after her brother and sister died, she became one of England's greatest rulers. She swore off men and was a brilliant leader who proved that a woman could do the job just as well as a man. Mary, Queen of Scots, Queen Consort of France at the age of 16 and Queen of Scots from birth. She made many mistakes in love and politics, making two terrible choices for husbands, being implicated in her second husband's murder and ending up imprisoned and later beheaded by her cousin, Elizabeth I. Christina of Sweden, who defied gender and religious norms to live her life in her own way, dressing as a man, loving women, and eventually giving up the throne to convert to Catholicism and live in Rome as a patron of the arts. Maria Theresa, Holy Roman Empress, one of the most powerful women in history. Her husband and son got to hold the title of emperor, but she was the real power. She reformed and modernized her empire, all while giving birth to 16 children, including Marie Antoinette. Catherine the Great, Tsarina of Russia who clawed her way from child bride to mighty monarch by having her husband deposed and murdered. She lived her life her own way, taking lovers as she pleased and dragging Russia kicking and screaming into the modern era. Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, who loved deeply and had a happy marriage and home life, despite being a bit of a domestic tyrant. She oversaw the Industrial Revolution and the British conquest of a quarter of the world, making her Empress of India and a symbol of the far-flung British Empire. For Queen's consort, I'm considering... Eleanor of Aquitaine, Duchess in her own right and Queen of France at 15. She traded an unhappy marriage to Louis VII for a younger man who she helped make King Henry II of England. But when their marriage turned sour as well, she turned their sons against him in one of the worst family feuds in history. Anne of Brittany, Duchess in her own right, was married to Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian I at 13, 
But when King Charles VIII of France started a war about it, she married him instead. When he died, she married his successor, Louis XII, making her the only woman to be Queen of France twice. Catherine of Aragon, daughter of Ferdinand of Aragon and Isabella of Castile, and the first of Henry VIII's six wives. She was a true companion and inspiration to the young king. She even rode into battle and won while heavily pregnant. But when she failed to give Henry a male heir, he tried to set aside his strong-willed wife, and the results were the most dramatic and significant divorce in history. Anne Boleyn, the most famous mistress in history, who won Henry VIII's heart and the crown away from Catherine of Aragon. He split the English church from Rome for her, but later grew tired of his second queen, had her accused of adultery and incest, and beheaded. Her legacy was mothering one of the greatest queens in history, Elizabeth I. Mary of Guise, when her husband, King James V of Scotland, died, leaving their six-day-old daughter, Mary, Queen of Scots, Mary of Guise ruled as regent. She pushed for closer ties with her homeland, France, and urged their support in securing Scotland's independence from England. Catherine de' Medici, from the powerful Italian family, married the future King Henry II of France at 13. When he was impaled through the eye during a joust, Catherine ruled France as regent for three of her sons during civil and religious wars. She was also a patron and devotee of mystic Nostradamus. Marie Antoinette, daughter of Empress Maria Theresa, she was a naive young woman under a great deal of pressure and expectation. She was one of the most fashionable women in history with some killer looks, but her out-of-touch excesses contributed to the French Revolution during which she and her husband, Louis XVI, lost their heads. Elizabeth of Austria, a shy woman whose beauty won the heart of Emperor Franz Joseph. She suffered under heavy expectations and a frankly evil mother-in-law. She became obsessed with her health and looks, had a 16-inch waist, and some truly bizarre beauty rituals. She was forced into a limelight she never wanted and into the path of an assassin. Alexandra Fyodorovna, granddaughter of Queen Victoria and Tsarina of Russia, whose guilt over passing hemophilia onto her son made her dependent on crude mystic Rasputin and contributed to the downfall of the Romanov dynasty and the murder of her family. Elizabeth Bowes Lyon, the first non-royal to marry a member of the English royal family in 400 years. She took on the unexpected mantle of queen when her brother-in-law abdicated amid scandal and was a national symbol of strength in World War II. As queen mother, she bolstered the reign of her daughter, Queen Elizabeth II. So who's your pick for the queens of 2020? Let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss a single one of these compelling queens. If queens aren't your bag, don't worry, I'll be covering many other fascinating history topics this year. Some of the episodes I have planned for the spring are... The shortest royal reigns in history. Louis XIX of France only lasted 20 minutes. The youngest kings in English history. Henry VI was just eight months old when he was placed on the throne. A Valentine's Day special on the romance between Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, where we'll explore the myth of Albert's famous <clears throat> piercing. And a three-part series on the history of conception, pregnancy, and childbirth. The ancient Egyptians tested for pregnancy by peeing into a bag of wheat and barley, and it actually worked. Please let me know in the comments what other history topics, royal or otherwise, you would like me to explore. I'm looking forward to another year of salacious stories and captivating characters from history, and I hope you'll join me on the adventure. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment your thoughts, and check out my other royal history videos. If you really want to help, please consider supporting me on Patreon. A link is in the description. Thank you for watching.